You see it. Gotta do it. If you don't know, two states had made moves to put in laws to pretty much go against social media, man. They said, mm -mm -mm, no way. Mm -mm, we're in an election year. You can't have this. You can't be putting up Donald Trump. Donald Trump got to be able to get his message off, man, to the people directly. So if you don't know, Texas, yes, Texas and Florida, they put in two laws recently to pretty much uh, go against social media to allow uh, Texas to pretty much fine social media companies if they decide to ban people from voicing their opinion, saying that it, go, it goes against our Constitution, our First Amendment, freedom of speech. Let me know your thoughts, man. Should social media be able to censor people? I mean, at least in Florida, there, this law is going to um, be directly directed toward candidates, which if you're running for office and you're not able to get your message out to um, everyone, people's views might be si um, one-sided. Misinformation might be able to get out there. What TV? We've also put out information before getting all the necessary um, evidence that's out there. Somebody's about to get fired right now. But let's just, that's a whole other topic. Let's just jump into this one. To hear two cases today regarding what Americans can see on social media. The key question is whether states can limit how social media companies remove content on their platforms. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington. The nation's highest court hearing two arguments Monday about whether two laws passed in Republican run states are constitutional, one from Florida and the other from Texas. The issue at hand started with the January 6th attack on the Capitol and the subsequent decision by Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram and others to ban President Trump from their platforms. The Texas law prohibits social media companies from taking down political content based on someone's viewpoint, even if it's considered hate speech. What? I mean, we definitely got to run that back. Texas is running to uh, allow people to post whatever they want, even if it's hate speech. Oh, no. I don't know if you heard about that little group that uh, decided to have a little protest down in Nashville. But they might want to de uh, decide to take their talents to Texas because Texas is putting in laws to allow people to say whatever they want, even if it's hate speech. I mean, things that make you say what, people? Let us know your thoughts. The Texas law prohibits social media companies from taking down political content based on someone's viewpoint, even if it's considered hate speech. The Florida law what? makes it illegal for tech companies to ban candidates on the ballot in the state from their social media sites. Supporters of these laws say social media platforms have been censoring users, especially those with conservative or religious views. The state has an interest, a First Amendment interest, in pr promoting in ensuring the free dissemination of ideas. But tech companies are arguing they have a right under the First Amendment to set their own standards to prevent misinformation. It's about government, in this case Republican government, forcing a private platform to say something it doesn't want to say. It will be like the government going into Chipotle and telling them that they have to serve hamburgers because people want hamburgers. Restaurants. What? I definitely don't want no burgers from Chipotle. But what do you guys think about that, man? Should the government be able to uh, uh, make the, the ultimate decision on what companies can, cannot and can allow? Let me know your thoughts. Should the government be able to ultimately decide what goes up? Because then we, too, then have a problem. Think about it. The government ultimately decides 
what goes up? Or should just no one be censored and say what you want? Again, anything on the social media platforms, take it with a, a grain of salt. Even our platform, we try to bring you the best information, and we will be updating you along the way. But let us know. Should the government ultimately decide, or should social media be able to d dictate how their company is ran for their shareholders? Let us know your thoughts. In government forcing a private platform to say something it doesn't want to say. It will be like the government going in to Chipotle and telling them that they have to serve hamburgers because people want hamburgers. Restaurants don't what? have an expressive right to exclude black people or Jewish people from their from their restaurants um, because they want to make a point. Similarly, the, the platforms can't exclude people they don't like to make some obscure and not quite clear ex uh, expressive point. The Texas and Florida laws would allow tech companies to be sued for violations. Lawmakers in both states say they're trying to regulate the business actions of tech companies, not their freedom of speech. The justices are expected to rule on these cases by June. I could. Wow. Let us know your thoughts, people. Things that make you say what? Now, the Supreme Court had um, had a hearing today that I believe expanded almost five to six hours. So we're just going to let you hear a little tidbit of how the judge and the social media's uh, lawyers went back and forth and hear the argument of them um, pretty much saying that the laws would apply, would, would, apl would be broad based and how it would affect companies like Etsy. Do we have any Etsy shoppers listening? Might affect you. Most everything. But the one thing I know about the internet is that its variety, it, variety is infinite. So at what point in a challenge like this one does the law become so generalized, so broad, so unspecific, really, that you bear the burden of coming in and telling us what exactly the sweep is and telling us how there is a legitimate sweep of virtually or, or a meaningfully uh, swath of cases that this law could cover, but not others. Well, well, when when does the burden shift to the state when it right when it writes a law so broad that it's indeterminate. I don't think so, Your Honor. I still think it is their burden as the plaintiffs challenging an action of a sovereign state legislature to show that the law lacks a plainly legitimate sleep. But let me just say a word about the, the breadth of the law. Uh, there, the, the legislature did define the term social media platform, which is part of what triggers the law's application. But, but that the breadth of that definition, which, which wouldn't cover every single website, it, it, would, it would cover certain large websites with large revenues and subscribers and the, and, and the like. Why should this only apply to large websites? This should be broad base. So at what point in a challenge like this one does the law become so generalized, so broad, so unspecific, really, that you bear the burden of coming in and telling us what exactly the sweep is and telling us how there is a legitimate sweep of virtually or, or a meaningfully uh, swath of cases that this law could cover, but not others. Well, well, when when does the burden shift to the state when it right when it writes a law so broad that it's indeterminate? I don't think so, Your Honor. I still think it is their burden as the plaintiffs challenging an action of a sovereign state legislature to show that the law lacks a plainly legitimate sleep. But let me just say a word about the, the breadth of the law. Uh, there, the, the legislature did define the term social media platform, which is part of what triggers the law's application. But, but that, the breadth of that 
definition, which, which wouldn't cover every single website, it, it, would, it would cover certain large websites with large revenues and subscribers and, and, and the like. What? But the breadth of the law, apart from that definition, is significantly narrowed by the fact that the substantive provisions of the law are regulating websites that host user-generated content. That's what the substantive provisions of the statute So let me to. talk about Etsy. Etsy is a marketplace, like if I'm going to try to analogize it to physical space, which I think in this area is a little crazy. Um, because it, yes, in some ways, this is like an online bookstore, an online magazine, online newspaper, online whatever you want to call it, an online supermarket. But it's not, because even though it has infinite space, it really doesn't, because viewers, myself included, or users, can't access the millions of things that are on the internet and actually get through them and pick the things we want, because there's too much information. So we're limited by human attention span, so are they. So our theories are a little hard, but let's look at Etsy. Etsy is a supermarket that wants to sell only vintage clothes. And so it is going to, and does, limit users' content. It's a free marketplace, it's open to everyone, but it says to the people who come onto its marketplace, we only want this kind of product. They're gonna have to censor, they're gonna have to take people off, they're gonna have to do all the things that your law say they can't do without all of these conditions. Why is that? Why should we be permitting, and under what level of scrutiny would we be looking at this broad application of this law that affects someone who all they want to do is sell a particular kind of product and they have community standards and they tell you that you, they don't want you to curse, they don't want you to um, talk politics, they don't want you to do whatever, all they want you to do is sell your product. But if they're a public marketplace, which they are, they're selling to the public, this law would cover them. I think that's right, Your Honor, but, but I, let me just say a word about how the law might apply to Etsy. Uh, first of all, it wouldn't regulate the goods Etsy is offering. What our law regulates is the moderation of user-generated content. So it would only apply to Etsy to the extent that they, uh, and, and I'm, not, I'm not sure to what extent it actually would apply to Etsy. I guess it would apply somewhat, but I guess people are uploading user-generated conduct in, con in connection with the sale of goods, and that's the conduct that would regulate. It doesn't limit what goods Etsy can, can limit its marketplace to. Well, let me just say well, a word about it that. it opens it up for sale of goods, and it tells its well, users, don't please speak about but, politics because that's not what our marketplace is about. It, that's viewpoint discrimination. This falls under a whole lot of your listings and bans and disclosure requirements. Why are we imposing that on something well, like this? Well, in Pruneyard versus Robbins, Your Honor, uh, this, this court held that the state of California could regulate the speech hosting activity of a shopping mall, which was hosting speech as an incident to... But not inside the stores. We said that they could come, but if they go inside the store, we didn't say anything that free speech, that someone could stand, stand on a platform in the middle of the store and scream out their political message. We said the common areas where we're permitting others to speak, we're gonna let this particular speaker speak anything he or she wants. That's why I'm afraid of all of these common law rules that you're trying to analogize to. Well, well Your Honor, I do think Etsy is similar insofar as it is, in fact, hosting speech and some expression as an incident to some other commercial enterprise, and I think that, if anything, makes Etsy's speech interests even weaker than the, the social media. Counsel, uh, you uh, began your presentation with talking about, concerned about the uh, power, market power, and ability of the social media uh, uh, platforms to control what people do. And your response to that is going to be exercising the power of the state to control what goes on on the social media platforms. And I wonder, since we're talking about the First Amendment, whether our first concern should be 
uh, uh, with the state regulating uh, what you know we have called the modern uh, public square. Well, I think you certainly should be concerned about that, Your Honor. What, what I would say is is that the, the kind of regulation that the state of Florida is imposing is one that is familiar to the law when you have businesses that have generally opened their facilities to all comers and content. This is the way that traditional common carrier has worked, uh, regulation has worked for centuries. If you were an innkeeper and you held yourself out as open to the public, you could indeed be uh, permitted to act in accordance with that voluntarily chosen business model. So I certainly think the court should proceed carefully. But one thing the court, I think, is important to keep in mind is that there is an important First Amendment interest precisely in ensuring that large, powerful businesses like that, that have undertaken to host massive amounts of speech and have the power to silence uh, those speakers, the state has an interest, a First Amendment interest, in pr promoting, in ensuring the free dissemination of ideas. Is there any aspect of... You heard it there. Just wanted to give you a little bit of flavor. Hope you didn't fall asleep because, man, they went about five hours hours. Now, you heard it. The judge made an argument that pretty much the laws that are set in place, they would affect um, uh, sites even like Etsy. I mean, we just want to know from you, should social media be able to censor certain people? Or, or do you agree with Texas that pretty much they, states should control ultimately what goes up on social media. And if these uh, companies try to censor anybody or block anybody, they should be fined. Let us know your thoughts, man. All I got to say is, man, these states, Florida and Texas, man, they're doing one for Trump, man. They're doing one for Trump. I mean, wow. Things that make you go what, people? Things that make you go what? Let us know your thoughts.